from the director of Heat and Collateral, Ferrari is coming to theaters this Christmas weekend. Is it good? What's up, Fleet fans? Adam Driver is a great character actor in this film. He's playing Enzo Ferrari. What's this movie about? Is it worth watching this weekend? Let's do it. This is a biopic of automotive mogul Enzo Ferrari, whose family redefined the idea of high-powered Italian sports cars and practically spawned the concept of Formula One racing. Michael Mann's the director. The movie's rated R for violent content, graphic images, sexual content, and language. When I say graphic images, there's one scene towards the end of the film. I'm not going to say what it is, but we'll start there. It is the most impactful and emotional scene and sequence in the entire movie. It's what the film is building up to. And I didn't really know that in the beginning because we're we're so focused on Ferrari's thoughts and feelings on his family, how he tries to put that to the side by showcasing this love for his cars, obviously. And we'll dive into that. But man, as we build up to that race and that moment and you know, this sequence that is based on history, so you probably know what I'm referring to, but the way that is displayed by Michael Mann, not necessarily the crash itself, because the VFX in this movie, they're a little shoddy. They're not the best, to be honest with you. I think the racing sequences are great, shot beautifully, cinematography gorgeous. The movie as a whole looks awesome. The aesthetic, the atmosphere, Michael Mann knows how to build that up, but it's just... Some of the crashing sequences, it it looks bad. Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Honestly, it looked bad for the trailer. I thought they would fix it for the film. They did not. The other aspect that I, I want to focus on with this movie is, like I said, the devotion for his cars and his baby is kind of his distraction from his personal failure because we cover the span of a year in this movie and, and we flash back and forth, but really what's going on between he and and his wife, played phenomenally by Penelope Cruz. Cruz has had a great last couple of years. I know that's not necessarily something that people talk about, but I want to talk about it because she's great once again in this movie. She and Adam Driver display the perfect amount of this distant anger that they're showing towards each other, but at the same time, there's this love between them that it feels impenetrable at points in the movie, and then at other points, she's just like, ugh. It's not good, man. The other big performance of note here is Shailene Woodley. And I don't know if there was a miscast there. She wasn't bad in the film, but when Driver and Cruz are just on this level, it's hard to keep up with that level and that, you know, the relationship, like I said, between the two. Whenever that's on display, which is what the movie is kind of focusing on, which is not what I was expecting, it's really good. You also have Driver's accent. It's very House of Gucci. It's not bad, but it is a occasionally distracting. That being said, he's always really good. He's giving a great performance here once again. I wouldn't quite consider him for an Oscar, and I know he's not being considered, but he's still really good. One of the better performances I've seen this year. Good. There's also some side plots in here where the company's kind of on the selling block. We're building up to that racing sequence. We don't get to showcase a lot of that earlier on in the movie, and I, I felt that that aspect lacking quite a bit, the first two acts, while engaging when it comes to the camaraderie or lack thereof between characters, I was looking for more of that side of Enzo's life. And once we get there and that table sequence where he's giving that monologue, looking right into the camera, that was awesome. The racing sequence was thrilling and enthralling. That got me back engaged with the movie. But to be honest with you, prior to that, while man's, you know, look and feel is great cinematography, like I said, and capturing the time period while also throwing in this renaissance-ish look and feel to it is good, I, I just wasn't feeling the connection to this movie that I wanted to feel. I felt distant from the story at hand. I felt distant, as good as the chemistry is between the two, to their relationship because it does feel a little choppy. I'm not even looking at the editing and saying the editing in the movie's bad. No, because the way these sequences are edited together are beautiful, but it's just the way that everything's put on display. And really, I think it's just a story issue for me and the lack of focus on what I felt was more compelling. The other storylines are his love for his son that he had with his mistress, the fact that Cruz's character, she's not in control of this company, but she's kind of doing all the things in the background that are really important and Ferrari's, you know, kind of slow descent into, not madness, sadness. <laughs> but Troy Kennedy Martin's script, and this is based on a book, Enzo Ferrari, the man, the cars, the races, the machine. Uh, 
I don't know if it is the original story and the adaptation of such. I know this is a movie that man's been trying to make for like 20-ish, 30-ish years now. So it's a very important passion project. But the way I feel about a lot of man's other films when I'm just so invested in the non action packed sequences the non what you would think would be enthralling you think of those moments in heat like yeah i'm so engaged but heat's a film where i'm engaged in that but i'm also engaged in the little conversations i didn't feel that with ferrari as much and maybe it's just the story itself isn't super compelling to me beyond the racing sequences but i've always been fascinated by the life of enzo ferrari Ford v. Ferrari, very different film, is one of my favorite movies of the last couple of years. So I think I just wanted to be engaged a lot more than I actually was and care more about the non-action sequences and the non-lead performances. But whenever other characters are on screen and we're not focusing on that, I just found myself, you know, kind of not as engaged and checking out a little bit. And I think this is why the movie's more divisive than I anticipated is because the focus isn't where a lot of people want it to be. It is the story that Mann wanted to tell, and I respect that, and I love Mann's work. This is one of his weaker movies, in my opinion. But before I give you my score, quick review, I know, it's the holidays. Go celebrate with your families. What's your favorite Adam Driver performance overall? And did Ferrari work for you? Ferrari features some of the most compelling and enthralling sequences of the year while also struggling to balance its various story points throughout. Our leads are great, and a few racing sequences are fantastic, but there are one or two moments where the VFX took me out. So overall, up and down on the movie as a whole, I think I wanted to like it more, but I'm curious. What are you watching this Christmas? And stay tuned because we're starting our countdowns this week tomorrow my best Netflix movies of the year, and later on, my best movies of the year. Will Ferrari make it? I don't know.